So our software, uh, the latest version is version nine. It's just it, version nine itself was released uh, a couple months ago, I think, right? In the summertime, is that right? Uh, and there's a SR2, a service release two that was released uh, a day or two ago. You can download that from our website for those of you who already have our software. So our program design office consists of Sizer, which is essentially for gravity loads, gravity design. It comes with a database editor so that you can add products. Shear walls, which we'll talk about in part two, and connections, which are dealing with O86 type of fasteners. In addition to when you purchase design office, uh, you have an electronic copy included of the wood standard, um, CSA O86. So if we talk first about Sizer, and then first about concept mode. So Sizer itself has three modes. Concept mode is, this is showing a, a plan view of concept mode, is where you can model all of your components. So this is showing a hip type of roof system. And it's really a, where you collect all your components and you can do a, a design. And you can fine tune the design in, in beam and column mode, which we'll talk about later. But you can get a pretty good set of results just, just in concept mode, just showing an elevation view. So if you do have your model in concept mode, you can then take those members and transfer them uh, by a click of a button and that'll transfer your length and your, your, your geometry, uh, the slope of the member, um, and also all the loads that were calculated in concept mode into beam mode. So it's actually better for uh, us to demonstrate that. So we'll do that now um, through Adam. So here we can see that uh, we have a model for concept mode. And uh, basically, the, uh, the concept mode allows you to um, create, uh, it, it allows you to create a gravity system for uh, an entire structure up to six stories. Uh, and w w when we think about concept mode, we think of it as uh, essentially a, a first iteration of the design. So there are several uh, assumptions uh, that concept mode works under that may or may not be applicable to specific uh, situations. Uh, such as end support conditions for columns uh, and uh, load patterning. Uh, so uh, wh what we use concept mode for is to get a general idea about uh, member sizes or uh, the gravity loads on a structure. Uh, and then we can use beam and column mode to analyze individual elements uh, which are close to uh, or over their capacity uh, to get a more refined uh, design for uh, individual elements that, uh, that, that were uh, focused on or concerned about. So essentially I've created a, uh, a grid here, uh, one foot by one foot grid, uh, and I'm going to uh, go ahead constructing an open air type of structure. So uh, the, the, the first uh, thing we need to think about in, in concept mode is uh, these, uh, the idea of design groups. Uh, so for instance, I can uh, name a column design group as exterior columns. And what the software is going to do is it's going to uh, take the worst case loading for the individual member in this design group and design all the members in that group with, uh, with that specific, uh, specification. So for instance, here in column uh, design groups, we have the ability to select from different material types, uh, timber, lumber, uh, glue lamb, uh, built up lumber, as well as uh, some uh, uh, structural composite lumber products, versa lamb and LP products. So in this case, we'll say we'll select a, uh, a timber element uh, with a species of uh, SPF. Uh, we can specify the grade that we uh, that we want to uh, that we want to spec, uh, and we can leave we can specify the width and the depth if we if we'd like, but we can also leave them as unknowns and let the software uh, essentially design the most efficient section for the width and the depth. Uh, with respect to the columns, we can uh, specify whether they're supported laterally in the B uh, or the D, the width or the depth direction, um, as well as what the service condition is. So in this case, we'll say it's a, a wet service condition. Uh, so we, uh, we, we simply go through and uh, we put the, uh, the, the column locations uh, where we'd like here. So I'll put one at uh, 2030 and one at uh, 3030. Uh, the, the other thing that I didn't mention from the outset is um, I specified a single level structure, but uh, we can go up to a maximum of six uh, levels uh, for a structure 
and the software will uh, essentially run the loads down from uh, through all the levels and trace the load paths uh, through the through that structure. Uh, sim similarly for walls, so we've specified two columns. We can then specify a design group uh, for walls. Uh, in this case, uh, we have the option of uh, lumber as well as machine evaluated lumber and machine stress rated lumber for the for the walls as well as those um, uh, additional uh, structural composite lumber products. So we'll say it's uh, SPF uh, number three stud grade wall. Uh, we know the width, we want it to be a, a dimensional two by a wall, but we don't know what the depth is. And we'll say our spacing is at uh, 24 inches on center. The default for the walls is that they are laterally supported about the B direction. So uh, the, the, the assumption is that there is sheathing on the wall and they're prevented from buckling about the weak axis. So again, we'll say that it's a, it's a wet service condition. And so to, uh, to, to design the walls, uh, we, we simply select a grid point and we drag uh, the wall across uh, and we've uh, created a, a wall in, in plan view. Um, we can actually go through and uh, look at uh, individual sections uh, of our structure. If I can uh, simply select a, a, an individual grid line here, uh, and we do have elevation uh, elevation view as well uh, for the uh, for, for the structure. Uh, if we if we go back to the beam view, um, we can then see that uh, we do have similar options for beams. We'll say that this is a, a glue lamp um, here, and it, we're selecting for the beam a, a glue lamp uh, EX uh, with the spruce pine species combination, and we don't know what the width or depth. Uh, we do have options to uh, select the uh, deflection limits in the concept mode as well. The defaults here we see for live and total, uh, uh, but um, we, we, we can leave those as is. Uh, the load transfer number is, is an important concept. Uh, you need to basically um, ensure that uh, loaded beams have a higher uh, or lower load transfer number than loading beams. So uh, the, if, a, if a beam had a load transfer number of one, it would essentially load uh, a beam that had a lower load transfer number of zero. So you can have up to uh, 100 load transfer numbers. So you can have, uh, you know, uh, tr tracking the loads down through the system. Uh, this is a new feature here. We have a fire design uh, for the glue lamp sections as for the National Building Code. Uh, so the, the software will auto automatically do a fire design as well. So here we, we will uh, we'll, we'll draw a glue lamp, uh, which is uh, supported uh, over top of the two columns. And we can also uh, select a joist area too. So uh, uh, similarly, roof joist or floor joist. Uh, in this case, uh, let's say we'll, we'll use the VersaLamp product, uh, unknown width and depth but uh, we, we, we do know the spacing and the service condition. So for the, uh, for the roof joists, we uh, simply select an area uh, whereby we want to apply the, the joists and the software will uh, span the joists uh, in, in the direction over the uh, supporting beam and, uh, and, and the wall. So if I can, Go back here, I can uh, see in uh, elevation mode here, we've uh, created a single level structure. I specified the height of the level as uh, 10 feet. Um, we can also uh, uh, create slope situations. So if I uh, go back and uh, change grid point elevations, uh, I can raise uh, the, the, addition, the individual grid points uh, and I can uh, create a situation where uh, we have a uh, a, a sloped roof, uh, simply uh, you know, two exposed exterior columns and an exterior wall, and sort of an open air uh, exposed uh, structure. If we, if we go into the loads view, uh, we have the ability to uh, specify different load types: uh, dead, live, snow, all the different load types that are listed in the National Building Code. So in this case, uh, we'll say that um, we have a dead load, uh, area load of. Uh, 10 pounds a square foot and the importance category we can also select uh, we'll say this is a low importance uh, structure uh, so we uh, similar to the joists we simply trace uh, the area of uh, uh, that we want to be loaded with the uh, with the area load uh, we'll specify say here 
a, uh, an area snow load as well of uh, 40 PSF uh, over top of the roof. And additionally, we can uh, specify uh, wind loads. So if we, we're assuming that uh, positive loads are downwards, uh, we can specify a wind uplift force of, uh, say, negative uh, 5 PSF on the roof. And once we've specified all those loads, we simply hit the calculation button. Uh, and the software now is selecting sections for each of the design groups. So for the, the, the roof choice, uh, it's selected a VersaLAM product. Uh, at the, similarly for the glue lamp, uh, it selected the section size that was, we've left as unknown, the timber column uh, and, the, and, the, and the lumber studs. So we can see that for the worst case loaded uh, member in each of the groups, uh, the software then lists uh, what the governing design criteria is. Uh, so for the roof choice and the beam, we have deflection at 80 and 90 percent capacity. And for the uh, exterior columns and walls, uh, axial load is, is, is the governing design criteria. Uh, additionally, we can have uh, results by individual member. Uh, so we can see here uh, for the, the, the different members, uh, we have, uh, you know, the positive, negative moment, the shear values, uh, and what is the critical response for each of these, uh, th these different uh, design criteria. The, the, the concept mode also allows you a, to, um, to have a material list. So it creates uh, essentially lengths uh, and section sizes. Um, so that we can have an initial estimate of, uh, of costing or uh, materials estimate. Uh, for, the, for the joists, uh, we're also including uh, lengths for trimmers or rim joists uh, over joist areas. And for the walls, uh, we're also including uh, the length of double top plate and bottom plate uh, for our, uh, our, our length of, uh, total length of lumber for, for the walls. Uh, finally, we have uh, the software uh, has the ability to run down the loads through all the floors of the structure uh, to the base of the structure, and at each of the uh, locations at the base, uh, we have uh, unfactored uh, loads, uh, which can be used for, uh, for, for design of, of footings. Uh, so here we see unfractored loads for snow, wind, uplift, and dead loads uh, for the columns and line loads uh, similarly for, for the wall. All right, thank you, Adam. So it's important to realize that you can do uh, simple structures or more complicated structures in concept mode. Sometimes it's um, um, interesting just to do so something as simple as deck beams and move those supports back and forth in concept mode. It's a little easier to, to do that than going into beam mode. 